there were a lot, a lot of bad hair days. Uh, just so bad, just so bad. I can't even believe I went out like this. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I didn't heat style my hair for one full year. Let me tell you, it was extremely challenging, but I did it. And I'm here to tell you what I learned from my healthy hair journey, as well as tips I'm taking into 2024 with me. All right, so first I wanna give you a little bit of history from where my hair started. I'm East Indian, so when I was younger, I had really thick, wavy hair. The kind of hair that your mom would brush out before school, and I would go to school with the triangle head, is what I'd like to call it, kind of look like this. Then when I hit puberty in the late 90s, early 2000s, that's when I discovered a straightener. I would straighten my hair every day. That was the look to have sleek straight hair. And of course, back then there were no studies about using any type of heat protectant. Of course, I would go right in with that Conair hair straightener right out of the shower to try to get that sleek look. Then the early 2000s came and I don't know where this came from, but everyone was dyeing their hair with box dye and that was the thing. And so my friends that were Indian that had black hair, we would grab the box dye, which was this really light brown color and dye our hair, just in hopes to get our black hair slightly more dark brown, I guess. And we would go lighter and lighter and lighter, not realizing the damage we were doing, dyeing our hair with this box dye every couple of months. Why this became a thing and we all just felt like we needed to dye our black hair. Like why, why with the dye? I don't really understand. I just, I just, I don't get it. So once that phase ended, you know, mid 2000s, when I graduated high school and having, you know, the straight emo hair suddenly wasn't in anymore, that's when people started curling their hair or maybe having the beach waves. So the way I would achieve this look is get out of the shower, straighten my hair with the straightener, and then use a curling iron to put a beach wave in my hair. So yes, it was, this was my way to tame the frizz by using the straightener and then using the curling iron to get a beach wave. And it looked great, but again, there was no heat protectant at this time, or at least there wasn't one that I was aware of. But oh, it's not over yet. Around this time is when I started getting really big into going to the gym and you know hot yoga and fitness. So that's when I would start pulling my hair all the way back as tight as it could go into buns to keep it out of my face. And I did not realize the damage or the long-term damage that this was causing. And then once I hit my 30s and got pregnant, that's when you know, the fullness of my hair started really growing in, started getting much healthier, nice long thick hair, and then cut to postpartum and starting to lose handfuls of hair. The hair loss postpartum, it's, it's a thing, it's a real thing. So this is about the point where I decided that I needed to make some changes to my hair care routine. Now, what really inspired me to stop using heat on my hair for an entire year was when my daughter turned two and her hair started getting really long. Now my husband is Scottish, so my daughter is mixed, but she's got this really beautiful long black hair. And whenever we would go out, people would always compliment her on her hair. Straight out of the shower, she has these really beautiful ringlets. And as she got slightly older, her hair was getting longer and longer and thicker and thicker. Absolute hair goals. So this is when I decided that I wanted to embrace my natural hair so I could show my daughter that you don't need to be using a straightener and a curling iron and all these products to try to achieve a look for maybe what's trending at the moment. Now, it was not easy for me to do. I had to do a lot of research on how to care for curly hair and watched a lot of YouTube videos, bought some new products and really had to revamp my routine. Now, I was not prepared for how much more work it is to wear your hair curly than it is to actually straighten it coming out of the shower. So there was a lot of bad hair days. Now I remember taking the before picture right here and I was so proud of this photo. This was the first time that I wore my hair natural after many, many years and I couldn't believe how wavy it is. And looking back, I think it's kind of funny because really just of a frizzy, frizzy mess. It's almost giving that triangle head vibe. One of the biggest changes I needed to make was to stop pulling my hair in such tight buns because as you can see here, I have a lot of hair loss along my hairline just from wearing such tight buns. I'm still working on getting that back and I'll show you tips that I've learned and tricks that I'm using to try to get that hair to grow again. 
Now, the thing about curly hair is in a place where there's very little humidity like Calgary and it's very dry, it's really hard to maintain your curls throughout the day. I would get out of the shower, I would do my routine, which took forever, it would look great, and within an hour the curls kind of had fallen or the frizz would start. It's just not cute. It just, it's just not cute. The good news is I could see curls starting to form. I could see baby hairs starting to come in, so I knew what I was doing was working. I took a lot of progress pictures, and again, every photo I took, I could see a little bit of progress. Um, looking back now, some of them were not good at all. It was like, oh damn. And you can see as the year continued, I realized that I had really made the top of my hair really, really healthy. It was coming in really, really curly, but unfortunately the bottom was so damaged that it was almost stick straight and um, you can see that in this picture here. So this is when I decided I needed to chop off all the dead hair and really embrace the new healthy hair that was growing in. Once I got this curly cut, my hair really bounced back and I was really impressed with how far I had come after a year. And eventually I did it. I made it 12 full months without applying heat to my hair. Now, I will say that when I attend photo shoots, obviously the hair stylist has full reign on what to do with my hair. So there were times where, you know, it had to be blow dried straight. It had to be curled with a curling iron um, and they did their best to try to keep my hair as natural as possible. But obviously it's what the client wants. And if they wanted my hair to look a certain way, then I had to go with it. So yes, there were times that someone else did apply heat to my hair, but at home for myself, several times a week when I wash my hair, I had to keep it natural and I'm really proud that I made it through. Towards the end of that year, yes, it was it was pretty rewarding to see the results, but I'm glad I don't have to go through that again and I'm glad heatless curls are now a thing. Obviously started using heat protectant religiously before blow drying my hair, but also before photo shoots, making sure that I'm applying it before the hairstylist goes in. Now, would I recommend it for others? Yes, if you have very damaged hair, if you have a routine that you've done for many, many years and you can see the damage in your hair, it's time to stop. Maybe you don't have to go a full year, it depends how slow your hair grows, but finding the right products and stopping using the heat on your hair really makes a huge impact. Now, do I still wear my hair natural? Sometimes. Reason being is it is a lot of work to wear your hair naturally, in my opinion. Again, I live in a dry climate, so the curls don't naturally come. Sure, when I go visit BG, when I go visit Thailand, my hair just thrives and I don't have to do anything to it. But in a place like Calgary, you have to give it a lot of love. A lot of products in the shower, products when you get out of the shower, to sleep with the bonnet on. It takes so much time to prepare to go out. There's no you know, showering in the morning and doing your hair and then going out at night. No, you pretty much have to shower right before you go out just so that your curls can stay intact while you're out. It's just a lot of work. The next day when you wake up, you have to refresh your hair. It's not just like wait, take off your bonnet and go. No, you have to refresh your curls. So it is a lot of work. To maintain this hairstyle I have now, when I get out of the shower, I threw my straightener in the garbage. I don't use it anymore. What I do is round brush my hair with a hair dryer, and then I just do heatless curls, something that's comfortable to sleep in. And I find that I can maintain kind of a blowout look. It's not always perfect for an entire week. Making sure now when I go to the gym, I only ever do loose, low ponytails, never pulling my hair too tight. So I'm manifesting long, black, thick hair down to my waist for 2024. Probably not possible because that's still a good five inches from what I have right now. But continuing with my routine, making sure I oil my scalp with, I have um, rosemary oil and castor oil, and that's what I mix together. Rub it on my scalp. I also massage with my fingertips to make sure that the oil is evenly distributed and then using my scalp massager as well. Making sure I never brush my hair when it's wet, only when it's dry to detangle. And then double cleansing in the shower. Using a hair mask on the ends I found has made a huge difference. And then of course we all know sleeping on a satin pillowcase has many benefits. Obviously great for our hair, producing less frizz, less breakage, 
but also great for our skin too, making sure that we're not causing any wrinkles. Now, the only thing I see that's going to disrupt my 2024 routine is that now that my hair is so healthy, it has made my gray hairs stand out pretty drastically. Oh, it's time. Make sure you like and subscribe because we will be dyeing our hair with box dye for the first time in many years to try to cover my first grays. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.